NASA study to save the world from another Yellowstone super eruption sparked warning it could be too late. Now, this is not the first time we've heard about NASA's plans to do something to cool down Yellowstone in order to stop an upcoming future super eruption. Yellowstone volcano, one of the 20 super volcanoes of the world, at the center of an exploratory study, quote unquote, to save the world from a super eruption, which later sparked a warning that it could be too late if action was not taken. Callum Hoare Express UK reports on this. The caldera, as we know, formed during the last three big events, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption 2.1 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption about uh, 630,000 years ago. And these were a tremendous amount of ash that came out. Not only did it affect Yellowstone and the United States, North America, it affected the whole world. Now, it's located below Yellowstone National Park, the area consistently monitored by United States Geological Survey for signs of uh, that history could repeat itself with a super eruption. Researchers previously came up with $3.7 billion plot to cool the supervolcano by drilling into its hydrothermal system. Please support my Patreon channel since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now, as we know, we said Yellowstone, one of the 20 super volcanoes of the Earth, and it has over 60% of the world's geysers, over 10,000 hydrothermal systems. Now, NASA called this uh, program Defending Human Civilization from Supervolcanic Eruptions. That's what they called it. And it started in 2015 at the NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratories in California. Their idea was to drill a ring around the magma chamber, then begin circulating water, gradually moving closer to the center. The thing is, though, that every once in a while, they have new... Uh, locations, new studies bring the, to light new locations of the uh, size of the magma chamber. We know that the magma chamber has a huge magma reservoir underneath. Some, some scientists say that it goes all the way down to the border of Mexico. Now, they say that uh, the NASA says that this would hypothetically release pressure from the magma plume and cool it down, what their program says. Rosalie Lopez, a volcanologist who worked on the study, said in 2017, the Yellowstone volcano has the potential to really wreak havoc. Well, obviously we can imagine that. She said this was just to start thinking of it's feasible, if it's feasible to use the technology we have now to cool a magma chamber and therefore prevent an eruption. She emphasized it was never a concrete plan, more of an exploratory study but Dr. Michael Poland, he's a scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, he rebuked NASA study at the time. He says, it's no fun to think about, however, the science isn't there and the idea is fraught with other problems. And he also said in the past, as long as he's a scientist in charge, no one's going to touch Yellowstone. Because you may end up bringing forth what you're trying to, to, uh, to uh, stop. Now, Yellowstone's park geologist Jefferson Hungerford added, we as humans don't have the capacity at this moment to stop a big volcano from erupting. How would we stop an eruption? The underlying premise here is to take the energy out of the system, that energy being heat, that we can't do that. We cannot do that right now, he said. But not everyone agreed that this was a bad idea in principle. Campi Flegri and Mount Vesuvius in Italy are studied by Dr. Luca Siena, who is also a professor at the Department of Geology and Petroleum Geology at Aberdeen University. He stated that the NASA plan is probably less risky than what has been done in the past at Campi Flegri, where a well was drilled near to the city. And he said, because the earth is very hot and high pressured, the drilling did not go well. After 500 meters, the well broke, he said. And despite this, he's still a fan of researchers looking into ways 
to minimize the risk posed by supervolcanoes, he said we have to do much more than what we're doing now to try and prevent a supervolcanic eruption. Let's remember that supervolcanic eruptions basically are uh, extinction level events. The last one that happened in Tapo, New Zealand, one of the 20 supervolcanoes of the Earth, um, it was an extinction level event and in, uh, anthropologists claim that they estimate that only 2,000 couples of humans were left worldwide after that eruption. Only 2,000 to start humanity again. That was about 27,000 years ago. Now, he says, these volcanoes are going to do something one day, and this could be in 100 years, 1,000 years, or even 10,000 years. We expect still to be on Earth in 10,000 years, and if we don't do something to decrease the stress of this volcano, we won't be able to survive on the surface of the Earth. It's not a problem that we may experience tomorrow or in 100 years, but it is surely a problem that if we don't tackle it now, it could be too late, he said. Over the years, there's been many unsupported claims that the supervolcano is overdue. An eruption after the average time between such events were calculated by Dr. Poland. And if you see the video before this one, uh, Dr. Poland suggests a hotspot may be in a state of decline during the USGS recent update on the YouTube channel. He said the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is only about 5 to 15 percent molten, so it doesn't have enough to generate one of these big explosions. He said over the last 15,000 years ago since the last ice age, we know from the geology of Yellowstone Lake that Yellowstone has mostly gone down. In fact, it's gone down about 100 feet, and over that time period, there's, so, there's no pressure and there's really no magma to feed one of these really big explosions. Even if Yellowstone did erupt on a schedule, the math still doesn't work out. And, uh, okay, he, go, he went through the math and everything. Dr. Polo went on to dissect the numbers, putting forth uh, detail on his own calculations. But still, let's say we're 100,000 years from now, and it's about to go. What can we do with the technology we have today? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so this is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments.